formal, functional, and perceptual regions. You have to know each of these for AP Human Geography. But you clicked on this video precisely because you do not know what in the fresh heck these things mean. But dry off your anxiety sweats because by the end of this video, you're gonna know all about them. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well, <laughs> let's get to it. So let's start as is proper with a definition. On the most basic level, a region is a geographical unit which shares some unifying principle. And that unifying principle can be cultural, like a shared language, or economic, like a treaty that binds states together into an economic unit, or a pattern or activity like farming or dang near anything else that helps bind people together. And there are two very important things to remember about regions. First, it is geographers who define regions. And what I mean is regions only exist in the brains of geographers who are studying various phenomena. Like we often talk about Sub-Saharan Africa as a region which is distinct from North Africa. And it's true that this giant honking desert here is a physical feature that might help explain why these two regions exist. But it's not like you're gonna hop on a camel and go trekking through the Sahara and find a sign that says, now leaving Sub-Saharan Africa. No, based on the various shared characteristics of the people who live down here, geographers define this region and that helps them compare it to other regions. Okay, the second thing to remember is that regions don't come in standard sizes. They can be giant and cross national boundaries like Asia, for example, or they can occur on a smaller scale within a nation. Like here in the United States, we have the South and the Northeast. But the thing to remember is that no matter how big these regions are, they exist because of some shared characteristic among the people who live there. Okay, easy enough. So let's talk about the three main types of regions you need to know. First is formal regions. And just to annoy you, these are sometimes called uniform regions or homogenous regions. They're all the same thing, so, you know, just don't get confused. Anyway, a formal region is a geographical area that is linked by common traits like language or religion or economic prosperity or some geographical feature, etc. For example, geographers could define a formal region based on people who are Buddhists, which would include East Asia and Southeast Asia. Or a geographical feature could provide the basis for defining a region like the Everglades in Florida. And here they might want to study the spatial effects of pollution or how easy it is to get your leg chomped off by a giant alligator. Here, real easy. Over here, relatively chomp free. But that's just a simple version of formal regions. Often geographers use more than one cultural trait to define a region like the overlap of language and religion and economics, etc. But the point is, formal regions tend to have pretty clear boundaries which separate them from other places. And I'll talk about why those boundaries aren't entirely clear in just a moment. So put that in your pocket and we'll get back to it. But now let's look at the second kind of region you need to know, namely functional regions, also known by its nastier name, nodal regions. Again, same thing, don't get confused. Basically, a functional region is organized not based on shared traits, but on a shared function. And what sets this kind of region apart is some central location or node around which that shared activity is carried out. And these kinds of regions also tend to have pretty clear borders, but you know, not always. Now, a simple example of a functional region would be a pizza delivery restaurant. Now, I'm here in Atlanta and I can't call a Papa John's in Nashville and expect them to deliver me a pizza. Why? Because I live outside of their functional region, which is defined by how far its delivery people are willing to drive. So that means I got to find the nodal Papa John's in the functional region where I live if I'm hoping to crush a stuffed crust Philly cheesesteak pizza and shave a couple years off my life expectancy. <laughs> Worth it! Alright, another example of a functional region would be the central business district of a major city which serves as the functional node for people all across the metropolitan area. Like, all the business takes place here and then people drive from the outskirts of the city and from all the suburbs to come to work. Now, to further confuse you, formal and functional regions can overlap, but they're often spatially distinct. And let's consider Iraq as an example. Iraq is a functional region with the capital city of Baghdad serving as the political and economic node. But culturally, Iraq can be roughly divided into three distinct formal regions based on ethnicity and religion. Okay, now the third kind of region you need to know is called a perceptual region, or you might hear it called a vernacular region. Now these are regions defined by people's shared beliefs and feelings about themselves, and the borders here are pretty vague. Like southerners tend to think of themselves as hospitable and more religious than folks in other regions like, say, you know, the Northeast. And in a lot of ways that's true. Like if someone from Boston moves to North Alabama, for example, they might be shocked to find people holding doors open for them or complete strangers asking how their day was. The point is, perceptual or vernacular regions exist in the mind of those who live there. And that means it's often impossible to draw a hard line where a perceptual region ends and another begins. Okay, now let's finish up by talking about the boundaries of regions. As I said earlier, formal and functional regions tend to have distinct boundaries, while perceptual regions tend to have vague boundaries. But even with formal and functional regions, boundaries are often transitional, which means there isn't a hard line separating them. And that further means that these boundaries are sometimes the subject of disputes, and when they are, we call them contested boundaries. For example, prior to 2011, the African country of Sudan was one country and served as a 
functional region. But Sudan also contained two distinct formal regions based on religion. Folks in the north were primarily Muslim, while folks in the south were primarily Christian. But in 2011, turmoil erupted and Sudan split into two different countries, Sudan and South Sudan. And so now each country serves as a distinct functional region based on economic and political functions and distinct formal regions based on religion. Okay, click here to keep watching my other Unit 1 videos and click here to grab my Heimler review guide for AP Human Geography, which has everything you need to get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.